Ignition sequence starts. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor and I'm checking volumes because I forgot to do it. This section of the show dedicated to Mr. B, Nick Burefato at Link2, who hates when I check my volumes at the beginning of the show. So I make sure and acknowledge him every time I do it. You know, folks, I don't want to pretend to understand 18-year-olds, but yesterday, my 18-year-old, he's got a routine and, and that's a good thing. But he, he leaves home yesterday morning. He said, I hear him shout, bye, dad. I didn't, I don't ever see him. I mean, I usually don't, don't see him till evening after that because he's got a routine. He's either doing baseball or he's lifting weights. He's got all kinds of stuff going on and that's good. But the kid comes in at that. Once he comes in in the evening, he come, he only shows up to eat the food more or less. And then he goes straight to his room. He never even, he never even said hello to me. Did not even interact with the kid. Didn't even look at each other the entire day yesterday. That doesn't happen usually. But I was like, wow. I mean, these kids, they do not want anything to do with their parents. And I, I even, I even asked one of his friends the other day while he was sitting there. I said, hey, is, is he just... Is he like, uh, uh, does he act like a jerk that doesn't want to speak to you? Like when he's around all you guys, or is it just when he gets home to, 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 uh, be forced to see his parents <laughs> and, I'm like, <laughs> and the guy's like, Oh no, no, he's, he, he laughs and all kinds of stuff. Every once in a while I look at him and say, Hey, can you smile? Let me see. I just want to make sure you still know how to do it. <laughs> When these teeny boppers, when they turn it about 14, 15, it's like they, it's like all of a sudden they know everything and they don't want you to be anywhere near them. Now I'm at peace with that. That doesn't really bother me, but every once in a while I'm like, wow, it's amazing. How can you, how could you be that detached from your family? Oh, okay. I'm done with my rant. Let's talk about XRP Las Vegas. Um, Las Vegas. Let's talk about XRP Las Vegas. I'm going to, um, I had talked to Brad Combs about, um, doing one of these spaces. I don't ever do them. Um, I don't ever do live stuff and that's fine. I can, I just don't do them. Um, I'm, I kind of stick to my routine, but we're going to do one today at 11 o'clock Eastern time and we'll do it here at, uh, on my feed. And I'm literally going to have to figure out how to do it because I've never done this before. You might have fun watching me fumble around for a little bit. But if we have anybody come in uh, the space that are that are any of the sponsors or people that are going to be there or just good guys that want to talk about it, we don't entertain bad guys. I don't, I don't, I don't surround myself with any negative people, period. Poison has no place in my life. Uh, if you're poisonous, <laughs> I can promise you. This is not the spaces, the, the X space is for you. If you want to go um, sit around and talk bad about people for an hour, um, there are several where you can go find another 30 people that would like to be in that spaces with you, but not in this one. We're going to be, we're going to be positive and actually be nice to people. We're going to do what the Bible says. We're going to do unto others. Imagine that because I was raised by Normal folks, not weirdos. <laughs> All right. Um, so, so that's at 11 o'clock Eastern time. Mickle, who is one of the good guys, XRP is back on breakout watch. Any piece of positive news that catches the market off guard could send XRP ripping. I like the sound of that. Tick tock. Um, then uh, the, they're doing the Paris blockchain. I wanted to show you this. This is kind of cool because Circle, who is on the link to platform, my sponsor, I'm going to show, uh, well, let me give them a little plug here. My sponsor link to has Circle on the platform. They have Ripple on the platform right now. Both 
who Ripple, who's creating a stable stable coin, stable, uh, Circle, who's already got one, and there's a special company that I'm not allowed to mention that's on Link to. You need to go there just to see which one I'm talking about, but I can't talk about it. So anyway, I thought it was cool because Circle had um they 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 did theirs literally in a in what looks like a, a bank ball. What a cool setup! All right, now. Um, this is interesting, folks. This is going to be right interesting. Let's see what I got here. Somebody just sent me something. I'm looking at it on my phone. Oh, yeah. I'm already covering that. The official cool guy of the Digital Asset Investor channel, who is Mr. Intuitive, who's been out of pocket, just texted me a tweet while I'm doing the show. Why Ripple stablecoin will succeed? The fundamental first question is, can you show me the money? Listen to this. Which the very fundamental first question is, can you show me the money? Many stable coins, if not most, uh, would fail that basic test, right? Of trust, transparency, accountability, and sort of market facing reporting. No folks, um, and, and so you the entire time that we've been cover uncovering ETHgate and all of that stuff, what is it, what is the, the overall theme that has risen to the surface? You know what it is? It's not just that XRP is the only digital asset with legal clarity. You know what else has happened in this process? The world has figured out that XRP is literally like the only, Ripple is like the only company in blockchain, maybe besides Circle, who has been completely transparent in what they have, where it is, who's got it, all that stuff. Ethereum can't say the Ethereum founders can't say that they practice um, what Joseph Lubin calls internal transparency, which means no transparency. That's a translation by honest people for what that actually means. Just think of all the digital assets and ask yourself, well, who owns them? Who do we know who owns the majority of these things? I'll bet you you struggle with that one. Do we know where Satoshi? Where is Satoshi? Satoshi has over, what, 1% of the Bitcoin blockchain? Where's that? Who's got that? <clears throat> now, against that backdrop, transparency, okay? Look at this. This is uh, one of the guys at Tether. Or, no, well, there's wait. Tether Truther <clears throat> is, um, is dead. There's, there's no more conspiracy theories, da 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 da. Listen to what this guy, this guy, I think is at Tether. Builders, we believe that our mission is so important that we have not only created a new way of uh, making payments, a new way of holding dollars, a new way of having a checking account, but also we created the first, you know, if you want to call it in that way, the first uh, over collateralized bank, right? So that's also why not so all. So he's the referring to Tether as a bank. Why is that important? Because Tether, a bank, they just got caught facilitating transactions, channeling Chinese goods to Russian military. The Treasury addresses, a Treasury address to Senate on illicit finance is Tuesday. It's coming, says U.S. Treasury Secretary Yellen reinforced that banks that are facilitating transactions to channel Chinese goods to Russian military face sanctions. Okay? Then, just follow me. Then you got this. Here's Janet Yellen talking about this. conversations about national security. Boy, there's a lot of coincidences going on in here. President Biden and I are determined to do all that we can to stem the flow of material that's supporting Russia's defense industrial base and helping it to wage war against Ukraine. We continue to be concerned about the role that any firms, including those in the PRC, are playing in Russia's military procurement. I stress that companies, including those in the PRC, must not provide material support for Russia's war, and that they will face significant consequences if they do. And I reinforce that any banks that facilitate... Well, Tether's a bank, he just said so. ...significant transactions to channel military or dual-use goods to Russia's defense industrial base expose themselves to the risk of U.S. sanctions. We also exchanged information on the use 
of the economic tools in the national security space. Going forward, I believe that we must continue to discuss how each side defines national security in the economic sphere. National security, there's that word again. Well, if you remember, Ripple has hired several people like this. Ripple's expanding its global AML and sanctions compliance team and seeks to hire an experienced manager to support its global AML investigations team again. I think maybe Circle and maybe Stellar, the only other two companies I've ever heard of that hire people to deal with adult things like this, okay? Transparent things. Then there was this article from Milk Road. <laughs> US off, uh, this is back February 2024. US authorities can control Tether, JP Morgan. Financial services giant JP Morgan released a report asserting that U.S. authorities retain power to indirectly influence major stablecoin Tether despite its overseas base. The bank's analysts argue Tether remains vulnerable given its heavy reliance on the American market. Treasury sanctions forced Tether on wallet back blacklist. Stablecoin transparency is still lacking per J.P. Morgan. Whose is going to be transparent? Circles is, and so will Ripple's. Tether's dominance is threatened by U.S. crypto regulation. That's the dirty little secret. And then there's this today. Wellwire just in. U.S. Treasury Department Secretary issues official statement to Senate Bank Banking Committee. Folks, this is all adult stuff. This is not cartoon monkeys. This is not green candles. This is the bigger picture stuff. The writing's clearly on the wall. And I know that we're just supposed to talk about people that are building uh, projects, but I got to tell you, this is a lot more interesting to me. Check this out. Right here. Fiat currency. In addition, we've seen Russian, Russia increasingly turning to alternative payment mechanism, including the stablecoin Tether, to try to circumvent our sanctions and continue finance its to finance its war machine. And then down here, check this out. Finally, a third reform addresses jurisdictional risks from offshore cryptocurrency platforms, which is a key challenge. By reforming existing authorities, we can clarify that our authorities can, can reach extra territoriality when digital asset entities harm our national security while taking advantage of our financial system. This will also promote a level playing field for the U.S. based VASPs. Then here's Bank XRP. Gareth Jenkins chatted with Brad Garlinghouse from Ripple backstage in, in Paris. He's bullish on the stablecoin space and hopes to see their recently announced stablecoin grabbed some of the market share, share from USDC and USDT. Here's Brad Garlinghouse. It's not about the 100,000 developers already working on Web3. It's about the 20 plus million developers who are yet to work on Web3 that's truly exciting. This industry is not going away. It's events like Paris Blockchain Week that keep growing for, a re for this reason. A heartfelt thank you. And by the way, let me mention, well, I can't say a number about XRP Las Vegas, but folks, many of you don't realize yet, but you're going to see two freaking YouTubers have packed out the MGM Las Vegas for XRP Las Vegas. These Think about the resources and all the money behind these guys, and two YouTubers have packed the conference in XRP Las Vegas, me and Brad Combs. I mean, this thing, it's amazing what, it's amazing what the XRP army has been able to do with just a little positivity and optimism about our future and research and looking into what's going on and the bigger picture of what is going on in the United States and globally with blockchain. This is how I've always thought about XRP. The sleeping giant. He's got four little fingers uh, up, coming up through the earth. Litecoin, Ethereum, BNB, Bitcoin, ADA. And here's XRP ready to bust out. 
Speaking about busting out, let's talk gold. The, the, the central banks around the world know that there's two things you, we, they may have to do. They may have to trade in a way where they can't use dollars because it might be blocked for some reason. They may have, be, they may have gone to war with somebody which, with, with which America doesn't agree and they can't use the US banking system. So they may have to pay with something else. And obviously if you've got gold, everyone's going to take the gold no matter where you are on the planet. And the second one is the risk of a failure of the Western currencies themselves, including the dollar. Um, and that would be what we call a currency reset in uh, an emergency, a crisis situation, a chaotic situation. So if we get to a currency reset, the country which has the most gold will call the shots. And those who have a lot of gold will be sitting at the table. And those who have no gold will be told what to do. Ha! How about that? Shane Ellis theory, anyone? New only 1.7 million Bitcoin are left on exchanges with the coming having supply shock is imminent. That's cool. Now, in um, I'm going to show you this. Eleanor Terrett just put this out. Turns out Stephen Neryoff has delivered. Former advisor to the Ethereum network, Stephen Neryoff and his legal team have filed Federal Tort Claims Act lawsuit suing the U.S. government for $9.6 billion dollarinis in personal damages as a result of the false charges brought against Neryoff and his mistreatment by federal agents between 2019 and 2023. According to the S, uh, SF-95 filing, Neryoff is suing the federal government on the basis that some of its agents were aware of a baseless nature of the charges they brought against him and also engaged in harassment and intimidation tactics. Now, folks, I'm going to go in, um, look at this. Fox, New Fox Business has also learned that prominent lawyer Alan Dershowitz is a consultant in the on the case. Dershowitz tells me Neryoff's case is unusual. I am strongly opposed to prosecutors targeting individuals, he said. That's why I agreed to serve as a constitutional consultant to Mr. Neryoff. Now, folks, now that this is out right here, I'm going to tell you, I'm, folks, I'm going to tell you what Stephen Neryoff said to me when we were filming for XRP Las Vegas in Washington, D.C., because this right here, I just re remembered something. In DAIXRP.com, I'm going to tell you what he told me around this right here when we were at XRP Las Vegas. It just popped back in my head and I had forgotten it, but I had, in I had intentionally not told my audience because he said nobody, he didn't want anybody to know yet. I'm going to tell you that, and I'm, what we're also going to do is I'm going to read you an excerpt of what he's saying these agents did because that's how I got kicked off of X, I believe. It was right when I put, I had screenshot from uh, his case when they went after him. There was a screenshot I had put out where it showed the, uh, uh, some of the names of the people the FBI had handed him a list and they wanted him to rat on, give them any kind of dirt on the list of people they had put in front of him. And that's when my X account got turned off. And so I'm not going to cover it out here. Big part of the reason I've got the group. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, tell your friends and family that away we go.